Hi again. Um, we're continuing on our journey of researching niches. In all the students that I've been teaching, um, the biggest question I always have that comes up is niches. How do I find niches? And in a niche really is just a word. When we're talking about making these books, it need not be complicated. I showed in one of my other videos, you literally just go to Amazon, you type in the word notebook, and then you type any word that you want in front of it. So a niche is really just a word. So animals is a top tier niche, all right? It's very broad, and very general, very broad niche. To, to go down in that, we would talk about the types of animals that are in that. So there's horses and cows and cats and, and all of those kinds of animals are sub niches inside of that niche. And then if we choose to pick cats, then within cats, we now have all kinds of cat breeds. And then with that cat breed, we now have all kinds of other low content book opportunities. So if I wanted to make a notebook on a cat, there's oh, maybe 120 breeds of cat. I would start researching on breeds of cat. Uh, so let's go cat, cat breeds. And here's the list of cat breeds. Okay, we'll go to actually, we'll go to Wikipedia and we'll go cat breeds. So here's an entire list of cat breeds. All right. And then once I made some books on these cat breeds, I would research and see which are the most popular cat breeds. And that's easy to do. You literally just go to Google and type in most popular cat breeds. And then I would go and research on Amazon, uh, Abyssinian. So that's, let's, let's take one. That's, uh, Let's see, a Balinese, a oh, Bengals, I know Bengals. Let's try that one. So just randomly taking Bengal cat. And we can see that there's a Bengal cat book, ornament, toys, gifts, food, mug. Let's see if there's a notebook. All right, so somebody has searched for Bengal cat notebook. Let's see how many there are. So I went for the niche animal. I took the sub niche of cat. Within cat, I looked at the cat breed, which is Bengal. So now I'm in all, and I see that there's a thousand results. I am looking and seeing, all right, that's not too bad. All right, these aren't great numbers, but it's still a, a pretty okay niche. Okay. Those are cute covers, cute covers. And then what I'll do is I drill down, I go to books, I click on that, click on the spyglass. All right, that's hopeful. I'm gonna highlight this. I'm going to click advanced search. I'm going to paste my keywords here. My computer's a little slow. Again, if you've never done this before, you have to type in the word independently published, which is published by KDP. And I'm going to just put in paperback books and click search. And you can play around with these other features here. <clears throat> so I see that my competition is 1000. It's really not that much. Um, now it has zero search, but I bet Bengal Cats has a lot of search on, um, on Google. So let's go there. We'll take Bengal Cat. <clears throat> and we see that Bengal Cat is searched 246,000 times. So the possibility of somebody that has a Bengal Cat wanting to get my book, my notebook, can be kind of high. Um, 
Then once I've made my notebook, if I've sold it successfully, then I would reach out because the notebook's the easiest thing for me to make. A six by nine notebook with a cat on the cover. Nothing could possibly be easier. Once I get better at doing this, then I can make a planner with a Bengal cat on the cover, especially if my notebooks have sold. Then I can go and I can create a cat logbook. I can go and create a cat journal with the cat on the cover. Not so much about the cat in the journal, but just having a cute cover. So that's how you start broadening your reach and deepening your niche. Let's talk about hobbies now. Um, because hobbies are super, super popular. So let's go back to where I was, to the list of hobbies, because I'm constantly amazed when people tell me that they've run out of ideas. And so you have all the animals that are in the world. Every single animal has a type of breed or subset, even cows. There's different types of cows. There's Guernsey and there's Jersey and there's uh, Hereford and there's all kinds of cows. And there's people who love those types of cows. Chickens, there's types of chickens and there's people who raise chickens and roosters. So there's tons of different types of chickens. Pigs even have different types of pigs that people raise. There's pygmy pigs and big pigs. And so there's a whole following of people who love different types of pigs. So looking at hobbies as the next thing that we're going to look at here, there's so many hobbies. So let's take a look at just these two. I typed in list of hobbies in, in um, Google and look at all these hobbies. So anybody who's out there saying that they're running out of ideas really isn't trying very hard because there's thousands of hobbies thousands of animals if we just randomly take now we took the kitty cat we randomly took a type of kitty cat uh, we can go here and uh, on this list of hobbies he breaks it down into the great outdoors collecting things food and beverage arts and crafts uh, building things fun and games so let's just go we know the great outdoors is very popular in the summertime uh, so we could have hiking uh, notebooks and log books and hiking planners and hiking journals and, and summer camping, hiking and winter hiking. And uh, there's backpacking, camping, hunting season is hugely popular in the United States. Fishing is hugely popular. Uh, canoeing is fairly popular. Kayaking, running, uh, geocaching is somewhat popular. Um, and it's a small enough niche that you might find some interest in that. So uh, I don't know much about that myself. So LARPing is live action role playing, um, Dungeons and Dragons and things. So that would be more, actually there's old, there's, there's people my age, I'm in my 60s who do LARPing. So um, it's not just for kids. Um, and then collecting things, antiquing, uh, let's just pick one. So antiquing, uh, we can look at cars, antique cars. And we'll go over to Amazon and we'll go back to all. I like to start up in all and we'll go antique cars. So we have antique car notebook. All right, doesn't look like anybody has done antique car notebooks gonna just type that in for a moment and see what we get so there's 10,000 results antique car uh, show Let's see it's still spinning sorry my computer's a little slow here now in the summertime Antique car shows are very popular. Actually, they start about, um, so antique car gets searched 720 times. Antique car show logbook. Let's try that. 
And I am going to also take a look at that here in Google. So you're seeing exactly how I research something. Um, so nobody looks at logbook, but how many people look up antique car show? So it's 720. So there's the top 10 classic car shows. And I would start, I would get a look at when their calendars are. Um, and I would make books that come out around the time that these car shows happen. Now you can't use the name of the car show because it's probably trademarked, um, but you could probably uh, put it in the description somehow. Uh, there's probably different ways that we could describe this car show. Let's take a look at them. And I wanted to look and see how many books are here. So Antique Car Restoration Journal. So there really isn't hardly any Antique Car Show logbook. Uh, let's see, journal and Antique Car Journal. Antique Car Gifts. All right, Antique Cars Collection. Let's try that one. Antique Cars Collection. Now I know that there are uh, antique die-cast cars. Let's try that one. And while that is scrolling there, I'm going to look up here. Antique die-cast cars. Those are those miniature cars. Uh, that people collect. So I know that people collect those. Uh, I know it's really popular. Okay, antique diecast cars. Let's just type in diecast cars and get rid of antiques because we're just talking about collectibles, right? So diecast cars. So people love to buy those. And that's searched 14,000 times a month. So let's go back to Amazon and type in diecast car. Diecast car notebook. Let's try log book. How about log? All right. So three hundred and twenty eight results in all. So I'm going to look up log book. Sorry, it's kind of slow. Okay, so diecast car notebook. Now this is pleasing to my eye. Okay, we know that diecast cars is searched a lot. Okay, 14,000. We can get rid of the plural. It doesn't really matter whether it says car or cars. Um, so it's because it's, you see, it's still search engines don't really care whether there's plural or not plural. They don't normally register that. So again, we started from the list of hobbies. We went down and we looked at the list of hobbies. We went over here and we randomly took antiquing and cars. Um, from that, I started looking around and then I started thinking about my understanding of antique cars and how people collect them. And so I just sort of got an idea in my head and I typed in diecast car just to see how much it was searched and it seems very, very popular. And while it doesn't come up here in the auto suggest, it only has 108 results. So, so many people are stuck listening to what other people tell them to do. So they don't do anything outside of the box. Diecast cars is searched fourteen thousand dollars, fourteen thousand times a month, and there's only a hundred and eight people that have these books. And we're going to drill down here in a minute 
And probably it's because people are just following blindly what other people are telling them to do. While these numbers aren't spectacular, there are two million here, um, this, these people are selling at least a few books every now and again. All right, and we're gonna drill down here in a minute. Let's go down here to books. The concept of low content books is to sell a few books of a large inventory. And so you definitely want to take advantage, at least make four or five books to see if they even sell. You could probably do a far better job on these covers than these people have done. So there's 82 results. Okay, uh, that's exceedingly promising for a term that gets searched. So all the indicators here is why nobody's making these books. There's zero search volume, except actually die cast car gets searched a ton. Um, so having die cast car definitely is worth it. Now they have a hyphen in the name. That may be why it's doing so weird. I would make some books that don't have a hyphen in the name and have it like this. I'd make a, a book with the, with the dash in it, one with the words separated, and one with the words as one word, like I have it here. I don't know that, uh, let's see what happens when you do die cast, because it is kind of two cars, two words, but Google treats it as one word. I don't know if Amazon would, so you could put the hyphen in there or not. Um, but there's only 82 people making these books. Are we kidding? This is crazy. Uh, so this is a totally open niche. The numbers don't look great, I'm going to tell you. But these people are still selling books. So if it's part of your inventory, sure, so you sell one or two books every couple of months in this particular category. I'm going to safely say that uh, this one book was only made right before Christmas, so they didn't make with enough time. Um, but this book made in November has sold already. This was made on Christmas Day, so they didn't have any opportunity to sell anything. Um, let's go here. So this book was made before Thanksgiving and it sold a couple. So I'm going to say that these books, almost all of them, have been made very recently, within the last month. And that's why they have no numbers, and they certainly sold at Christmas time, and there's only 82 books. So that's how you find a niche. This is what other people aren't showing you. They're saying, oh, you need to follow these numbers and do these things. But those are the mentalities that people have that are trying to sell a lot of books. We're trying to sell a few of a lot of books. So if I make five die cast car collection books, I work on making better covers. I just have lined interiors inside. So I'm not really gonna hurt myself making this book. It'll take me all of 20 minutes to make five of these books and upload them to KDP. And then if I sell them, then I'm gonna come back and start making die cast other types of books. Die cast books for, for a planner a die cast log book for some of the shows that are going on because there's our, there are collection shows. And if I sell one or two books, then I'm gonna start digging deeper into that niche and fatten that niche out because I'm gonna start learning a little bit more about die cast books. So hopefully you can see this is how you research. You go to Google, you type in what you're looking for. In this case, it was hobbies. We started out with animals, your broad niche. Then you go down in your broad niche into a, a smaller niche, so cats. Within cats, we went into cat breeds. Okay, uh, with the hobbies, we went from uh, uh, hobbies, hobbies, and then from hobbies, we, we found collectibles, collecting. Within collecting, we found antiquing. In antiquing, we found uh, antique cars. And from antique cars, I came up personally, and I'm sure you'll get ideas as you think about stuff as you're looking. I said, well, how about die cast cars? And so I went over and looked it up, found it was valid, went back to Amazon, typed it in, and voila, 
nobody's here in this niche. And almost, and all these books that are on this page were just made. They were made within the last 30 days. All right. So I think that's pretty amazing. Um, so make five books and test it out. Do that again, do that again, do that again. You don't need to make thousands of books. You make five books and test something out. If something sells, then you go deeper into whatever that book was that you sold. And then if those books sell, then you make more of those. And then you that's how you start scaling out from your winners. Don't scale from your losers. Don't go making thousands of books when you don't even know what's selling. All right, make a few of little winner gems like this and you'll be making great money in no time. So hopefully you got something out of this. It's a little bit different than what other people teach and that's kind of how I roll. So talk to you later.